Hi there, Mark here again. Welcome to this video which is part two of my build guide for the heavy dump truck on the GFO1 chassis. So let's carry on. So this is how far we got in part one, which was to uh, step nine, I think, um, which was fitting the motor. So now we're ready to get the suspension mounted to the chassis. So let's crack on with uh, opening parts bag B and uh, we'll get on with step 10 which is making up and fitting the front arms. Um, I've made up the one side, which is this here, and all you need is parts C17 and C16, and they just slot together, like so. And as you can see, there's um, notches there that line up to show that you've got it the right way around. Uh, they only go one way, so yeah, put those, those together, and then just fit in them together with your two 10mm screws. And don't go crazy over tightening these because the plastic is quite soft so just give them a good nip up but like I say it's easy to strip the plastic so don't get too mad okay so that's the two made up you want to get your two gearbox joints you've got the long one and the shorter one and you just need to put into those the o-rings the black o-rings so just pop those in and it's always useful just to use one of your dog bones and give it a good push down to make sure that's seated in the bottom and uh, yeah do the same for both you need to put a bit of grease onto these parts that are going to go into the gearbox and uh, push them into place I don't really think it matters which side um, the long one or the short one goes in but I, you know just in case I'm going to copy the diagram so on this left hand side I'm going to put the long one in and the shorter one on the right hand side give them a good push in they should lock together so right now let's get the uh, the top arms fitted which is C3 I've already fitted this one just make sure you get them the right way around as you can see in the diagram the flat part goes towards the rear towards the back so you want it that way around need your step screw and a little tip again just to make sure that uh, you're not got plastic pivoting against plastic just put a little 3mm washer onto that uh, step screw and then tighten it up it should look like that the last part of this step you just need this u-shaped shaft which is an MB10 and you need to fit the low arms on to these lugs and simply push the shaft in and you'll end up with something like this on to step 11 so you're going to need these plastic parts which are B1s and B9s and the first thing we're going to do is get these B9s let's get the orientation right with the diagram one that way and this one that way and what we need to do first is put the 5mm ball joints into the bottom I've also got all my hardware lined up on the left there matched up to the diagrams so let's get this joint in there like so and the same but the opposite on the other side once you've done that get your 1150 bearing or your bushings if you haven't got the bearings push those in and get your wheel shaft and push that into place and I've got to say those really did need a good push to get the bearings to seat into the, the plastic part but yeah it's better tighter than loose I always say so now we're going to fit those into parts B1 again note the orientation you want the uh, narrower hole at the top there's a wider one at the bottom there so that goes at the top and we're going to fit it with these MB4s 
which he calls step screws, I'll call them kingpins. Now it does show putting grease on all these parts, but you'll probably notice I'm not going to bother because I find that running these kits off road in the dirt and grease, the, uh, the grease just attracts all the dirt and the grit sticks to it and it kind of wears out the parts. So if you're going to put any lubricant on at all, I'd recommend a dry lubricant like a PTFE, something like that, PTFE spray you can get. Um, but yeah, if you want to, um, go ahead, grease them up, but like I say, I'm not going to bother with mine. And from my experience, um, it doesn't cause too much wear anyway. So, you just fit that in there and one of each of these kingpins in the top and the other one obviously goes underneath. So there we go, there's the uh, first one made up and obviously do exactly the same for the other side. So once your uprights are made up we can get these onto the chassis. So get your upright, put it into the lower arm at the bottom there and get your screw pin Put grease on if you want, slide that through, and just nip that up. Your dog bone, put that through, get it engaged in the cup, and then in the cup in the chassis. And then it's just a case of getting the top arm on, and that's with another step screw. And again, if you can get another 3mm washer in there, in between the top arm and the upright, then all the better. Okay, so it looks something like this. And uh, obviously do exactly the same for the other side. And then get part F4, which is this part, which will hold that U-shaped uh, bar in place. And it just goes on there with your two 10mm screws. And when you finish step 11, it should look something like this. On to step 12, where we're going to attach the rear arms. I've made the one rear arm up again, as you can see. So you need part C14 and C15. And as it shows, they only go the one way. Again, you've got the two markings there that you need to match up. It should look like this. And then you've got your two 10mm screws that hold the two together. So we'll just get those done up. So there's the two arms. Get your output shafts again, make sure you're pushing the O-rings into those, get some grease on and we'll get those in the chassis now. And again, I'll go with the diagram and put the long one, this time in what will be my right hand side. and this short one on the other side. Now we're going to fit part C4 which are the top arms and again they only go one way around. It's very difficult to tell actually but I think the side with the flat um, where the hole is, the other side's got a lip if you can see there. Um, I think it's the flat side that goes up against the chassis so that way around and we fit these in with a step screw again and I will put a washer on the other side it should be like this then get your lower arm and the long step screw if you've got left, there should only be two left now and obviously this goes into the bottom mount like that and then repeat for the other side. With both sides done, that's the end of step 12, so on step 13 which is attaching the rear uprights, which are these parts, B4. Again you need to fit in your 1150 bearings into the inside of each one and then push in your wheel axle. Again that's a very tight fit that bearing but that's uh, like I say it's a good thing. Next get your 32mm screw pin, which is an MB3, and then we're going to fit those 
uprights to the lower arms, very simple. That's the bottom fitted, get your dog bone. Once your dog bone's in, you've got to get your top arm and connect that to the upright with another step screw. Like so, and obviously repeat for the other side. And with them both done, that's the end of step 13. Okay then, time to open parts bag C. Parts bag B is finished. And on to step 14. This will uh, do to step 30 now with parts bag C. And uh, as you can see, we're going to build the shocks, they're friction shocks. I've already got the rubber tube and cut that as it shows in the diagram. Just used a hobby knife and cut them to the 12mm long. And you need to get all your plastic parts ready, which are parts C1, C2, C12, and C9. Okay then, so it's quite simple really. You just get your shock body, get one of the long screws, the 3B32s, and plonk that through the shock body itself. And then you've got to screw on the shock bottom, which is C12. And simply screw that on. And you can just get a screwdriver in there and tighten it up. Don't have to go too mad. In fact, I think that was spinning as I was turning it there, so now you don't need to tighten it very much indeed. Um, it shows with the Allen key through the end there, but I don't think you need that. You don't need that much tension. Anyway, so that's that done. Then we need to get your rubber tube and put a bit of grease in the end. You don't need uh, too much grease, just a little bit will do to stop the, uh, the head of the screw binding and uh, push that on. We'll push it inside, I should say. Simply get C1, plonk that in the top. It is keyed, so it only goes one way. So you can see there's a little key in it there. And just get your 10mm screw and uh, fix that part into the shock body. There you go. Can't really feel much friction there, but there you go. That's that. Uh, then you simply get one of your shock springs. Push that over, and then you've got the bottom retainer, which is a C9. It simply clips on. The spring will be loose like that, and it shows here for um, the front dampers you need part F10 spacer, and for the rear ones you need the thinner part F11. So, build three more. Okay, with all the shocks built, it's on steps 15 and 16, which is basically fitting them onto the chassis. Uh, as you can see, 15 is the uh, front dampers, there's one fitted already. So all we need, quite simply, is your shock and uh, two of the step screws. And uh, I think it's easy to fit the top one first. So again, pop your step screw through. So easier said than done. And uh, put that in that top mount there. And the bottom one locates into the uh, lower wishbone or eye arm, kind of there. So that's the front ones mounted. Onto step 16, the rears, again, it's exactly the same. You've got the screw goes in the top there and into the lower wishbone there. Again, when you're doing these uh, bottom ones up into the wishbones, um, make sure you don't go too mad tightening them up because it is really soft plastic that we're screwing into. That'll do. So there we go. All the four shocks are fitted to the chassis. Uh, I think this is a good point to call a close to this part two of the build guide. Um, it's gone on long enough, I think. I hope uh, you've found um, something of interest or of help along the way. And I very much look forward to seeing you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.